Hello and welcome everybody to another puzzle challenge video with chessuniversity.com. This is Ryan Murphy and we are starting off with the solution to yesterday's puzzle. So if you have not already solved it from this position, it's black to play and uh, completely equalized actually. Um, and in some cases I guess you could even think black has the easier position at the end. So trying to find the best line for black. So I'll give you guys a moment to pause if you haven't already taken a look at it and then I'll proceed with the solution. Okay, so in this position, the best move to start with, and this is often the case in tactical positions you're presented with, is to look at the checks, and the most forcing move in this position is rook takes f2 check. White has to take back, otherwise they're just down material. And now the move that the computer had played in the game, because this was from a blindfold game I played against a watered-down version of Stockfish, um, was rook takes d1, after which white was material up and better and then went on to win. Um, but the best move and the move you got to see here is this move, f takes g3. And it's very difficult for white to find a good move against this. And I'll show like why each of the different king moves has different issues with it. Um, the first one and the, the most uh, important one to spot right off is that if king takes g3, rook h3 is the problem. And taking advantage of the fact that the knight on c3 is not protected. Next move after the king moves, black will take the knight and be up material. Uh, what else can happen? Well, there's also this move king to g2, but that would walk into rook h2 check. And at minimum, black is going to be able to scoop up the c2 pawn uh, with an active rook on the second rank. And of course, the pawn still cannot be taken because of the same rook h3. So that takes already two of the more natural looking king moves. Um, let's look at another one. So if king f3, which is also a very normal looking move, this loses for yet another cool tactical reason. Yeah, so here you can start by trading, which looks just like even, like it's an even trade. But then there's a beautiful move here. So actually, this is if you haven't seen this from the get-go, uh, this is actually a good moment to pause and sort of reevaluate, because black has a really cool move here. Okay, yeah, the nice move here that wins for black is move bishop g4. Skewering uh, the king to the knight, which is unprotected on d1. And the, the key point is, of course, that if they take the sacrifice bishop g2, and there's just no way the king can stop the pawn, and the knight's also not in position to stop the pawn either. So black makes a new queen and wins the game. Um, so that covers a lot of the moves. Like, what do we have left, really, when we look at it? King e3. And this is by far the best move for white. But now, after g2, there's the problem of how to stop the pawn. White has to play king f2 to guard the g1 square. And now, you don't have to see much further than this. Like, if you see up to this point, it's good. Um, but basically, you reach this endgame where white can eliminate this, and the bishop's going to take on c2. And if anybody has chances here, it's black, though it should end in a draw. So, for example, knight e3 to save the knight, because the knight was hanging, obviously. And now a5. Usually, like, you'd prefer to have a bishop here, because the bishop's very active. But at the moment, the pawns are on dark squares, and there should be a way to hold this with white. It just looks like it'd be more comfortable for black. So that's the best that white can do, which shows that it's already a pretty tricky position for white, and this is by far the way to go uh, from the black side. So that's the solution to yesterday's puzzle, fg3. If you saw that in between capture, very good. And now let's move on to our new puzzle of the day. All right, so this one comes to us uh, from a tournament played on chess.com between a lot of strong title players. Uh, this was Shankland against Cameron Wheeler. And uh, the key position here is black to play and win material. There's two ways to go about it, but it's the same tactical concept. And uh, I'll quickly show how the game developed up to this point. There's a rapid uh, 15 plus two time control. So the game began as a French. Tarash, c5, knight gf3, cd4, knight d4, knight c6, bishop to b5, bishop to d7, defending the knight, knight to c6, b c6, and bishop back to d3. Queen c7, queen e2, bishop d6. And black's getting pretty good development here, so position makes some sense. Knight to f3, now there's potential threat to play the move pawn to e5. So to avoid that, black captures on e4. Queen takes e4. Rook to b8. 
good question here is why not knight f6? Knight f6 also looks like a pretty normal move. In fact, it's probably a good one. Um, perhaps the problem here is that after the queen simply sidesteps, like queen h4, it's still not going to be that easy for black to castle short, because there'll be ideas like knight g5 or bishop g5 coming in. But okay. G, uh, b3 was played by white to get the, the bishop in the game, and also to force to block the rook so the rook can't take the pawn, similar to yesterday's puzzle, or the game where the uh, same idea was played. So knight d5, castles, knight to f4, trying to eliminate uh, white's pair of bishops. And probably that's actually what should have happened here. Like bishop takes, bishop takes, and then let's say just developing this this rook, either d1 or, or e1, would have been a probably a better continuation for white, because it's still not clear what's going on with the black king. Clearly it's not going to go castle queen side because that's not legal anymore. And if short castles, you know, there's there's some ideas here with the bishop pointing at the king. If this bishop retreats back to say d6, there probably already is the Greek gift sacrifice, which is this concept. Knight g5, I don't think is actually the way to go. Usually this is the way to go, but I think the king will walk up to g6 and survive. But starting with this, I think queen d3 check is probably okay. Because on f5, you should have this. And these guys are kind of getting embarrassed on the, the d file. And I think the same thing goes for g6. So yeah, it's not like the full Greek the full Greek gift would be knight g5 and then queen h5 and then checkmating idea, but beginning with the sacrifice on h7 and then exploiting uh, the skewer ability of the bishops on the d-file. Okay, so that yeah, that was a different way for white to play by giving up a, the pair of bishops and then playing against the black king in the center. But instead it was queen d2 and then c5, bishop to b2, bishop to c6, queen to e3, castles, rook fd1, and now it is black to play and achieve a very good position with material up. So if you spot this and uh, you want to make a comment for the solution, check out the link in the YouTube video description and that'll point you to the Chess University page uh, where you'll find this puzzle. And that's where you should write your comments. If you put it there before we put up our solution, you can get rewards points credited towards your account on chessuniversity.com. So if that interests you, please do check it out and uh, stop by for, for another puzzle tomorrow. Uh, until then, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.